Welcome to the Fit Mama podcast where it's all about gaining your health back as a busy woman and mom, and doing it without sacrificing time with your family or business. Here is your host, mompreneur and Fit Mama health coach, Angela Campbell. Let's dive in. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how this amazing busy mama of four fits time in for herself, and she's been doing it crazily consistent, which I love. <laughs> um, and then we're also going to talk about just how she's uh, been able to overcome things in her own mind to help, um, you know, just realize the, the importance of her health coming first, not only for herself, but for her family and for her mm-hmm. business all the things and then what she's changed she's going to share a little bit about what she's actually changed um in her priorities that's really truly helped her not only lose 11 pounds here recently 11 pounds is freaking awesome um and and uh, many inches along the journey as well too since we started a while back and then uh just more so we're going to talk about how she's good the I feel like right now you're the most mentally strong that I've seen you since we met. I think that I've ever been in my whole life. Yeah, I think so as well. So we're definitely going to talk about that. So if you're listening, if you're watching this right now live stream, um, then say hi. Say hi to Louise. Ask questions. If you have any during this time, ask them. I'm going to be watching them so we can definitely get them answered best we can, or we will afterwards at least. Um, If you're catching this later on a replay uh, or on the podcast, then uh, you need to join our group so you can also check it out live stream. You can go to our website, acfitmama.com, join our group, or acfitmama.com slash chat, and set up a time to chat if you are struggling, um, as she was, or as many of us do, and just let's let's talk. Let's talk about it. Figure out what you can do to make uh, the changes, right? So if you're watching this right now, too, I would love for you to share, like, what is your current biggest mental struggle? Because I know there's a lot of us going through those. Um, But before we do get started, I want to give a couple shout outs because I love giving shout outs to some pretty amazing uh, women right now that deserve it, right? So in the Fit Mamapreneur group, which is where we are always, and if you don't follow Louise, you need to follow Louise because you will get fired up watching her. So definitely uh, check it out. And so the shout outs today, I want to talk about a couple of women here that I feel I'm extremely proud of because one, they're saying, uh, they're, they're saying I'm important too. So let's do this. They have committed to themselves this week just by simply getting started, um, which is a huge step. It's probably the hardest for a lot of people is just simply re- realizing it's time that I get help and I, I need to do this for myself. Um, so big shout out to Amy Pryor, Brandy Miller, and Maria Mahoney, all three women that uh, that we are blessed to get started actually on Monday. So shout out, say oh, welcome. Course. If you're watching this in the comment or in the in live stream, definitely say hey, welcome to these ladies. Um, and then two other women I want to give major props to, uh, Jennifer Murray. Uh, she is amazing and quiet and very humble on sharing her progress, but she um, has been avoiding the scale, actually, and got on it recently and realized, oh, I'm 15 pounds down. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome. Yeah, super shout out to, uh, to Jennifer. And then also Alma. Alma, I believe she's watching. She actually just commented as well, saying that she loves your accent, which I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank doing, you yeah doing amazing putting yourself first prayers for you right now because i know you're really close to all the storms alma but also four inches in her waist ladies it's going away wow yeah so really awesome again um so i want to dive into it and i know the those that are watching are ready to listen to you louise so um again if you're mentally struggling this is definitely an episode that i think you should really really listen to and it'll be on the podcast for replay starting monday you can listen to it over and over and over so let's start there if you are ready louise i would love for you to start just by simply sharing with those that are listening or watching now like what is a day in your life look like like all the all the the responsibilities that you have growing a business a mom you know all the things share with us and what you do Okay, that's like I took a deep breath thinking, oh my goodness, there is so much. So, um, I am a mum of four, aging from 15 to one, all have varying different needs. Um, So that keeps me busy in itself. I'm running um, my own home-based business. I've been uh, my own home-based business owner for 10 years. I homeschool, uh, well, currently homeschooling all of them because we've all been home for COVID, but my 15-year-old I homeschool too. 
Um, I have four dogs, uh, three guinea pigs, and awesome. yes, yeah, it is. It's hectic. As I think particularly the youngest ones, the one-year-old and the four-year-old, still need me lots and lots and lots. And when the baby is at home, it can be really, really hard because all the baby wants to be wants to do is be picked up and go outside and play bubbles and you know eat and but on me. So it is. It is full on like really really full on and obviously I wouldn't have it any other way but what I have noticed is when I'm like that sometimes it can get overwhelming which is why I made the decision obviously to start making changes because I've obviously realized the priority of, of how important it is for us mums to be you know looking after ourselves but yeah it's hectic like really hectic the baby had didn't sleep for like two years well she's not even well she's coming up for two so yes, I also had no sleep with that too. So that was like harsh. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is. So yeah, it's busy. Yeah, yeah. And um, so how do you find time to to do all that and grow a business while the, and I love that you brought up the, the, the baby because I, I'm kind of in the same boat with a two year old, which he's at he's at my mom's I'm blessed today, but he like it's it's challenging so tell me or better yet like doing all those things what have been some of your biggest mental struggles um throughout your journey to juggle it all like what maybe um you know just disbelief maybe mom guilt any of those types of things mom, ab absolute mum guilt um the one thing i know that i'm a good mum, and that's one thing that i can um i can say and that's i think the world being in the world of self-development it's I know that I'm a good mum and I, um, well, I, I put every, did put everyone else first, but sometimes what I, my pattern would be that I would get so overwhelmed, one, because I wasn't looking after myself, um, that I'd end up crying and having to have time upstairs away from everything because everything was coming on was on top of me but at the same time when you know I wasn't facing you know the struggles that I knew that I needed to face I would end up going for foods that would give me that comfort like chocolate releases endorphins it's like a, it's like a drug you have it and it makes you feel good but then you know you're on that vicious cycle of um you then have the guilt about eating it and then you're on this vicious cycle where you're eating whatever you want to make you feel good but it's only for a brief time and then you're going back on that oh I feel disgusting I've eaten this I've eaten that um and then it is just relentless and it is just um a really really horrible place to be because I knew that there was stuff perhaps that I needed to face but I didn't want to face it so I'd soothe myself with chocolate or whatever food was like my my emotional eating food so yeah, that has been a struggle because everyone else would come first and I was at the bottom of the pile. And that's why I had to sleep sometimes twice a day for six years, you know, because I just, I wasn't well, I wasn't healthy. I was just, in fact, the last six years have been bloody hard. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's been tough, really tough, yeah. Yeah. So you, you yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I hear that a lot from the mamas out there that, you know, we put ourselves on the back burner for so long, then you do get to a point where the mom guilt kicks in because you know, you're a good mom, but you're trying to juggle it's it all. You, maybe, you know, in some days I know I can, I can say for myself, you know, you get to that point where you're, you're not really that good of a mom that you want to be, or you're not the happy mom. You're sometimes turned into a monster mom when you're mm -hmm. like, that's the last thing you want to yeah. be. But when you're so tired, yeah. worn out, not taking care of yourself, and even, you know, things with nutrition can totally throw your mood off. Um, but, you you know, I know a lot of women that self-soothe and their stress goes to the chocolate, like you said, and the food. And then mm. they put themselves up after that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then it's this constant mental struggle. Um, and, you know, I've, I've struggled my whole life, and I think it's important for me to share this, but I've struggled from probably around the age of 15 with food, because, you know, I had stuff that happened in my childhood and never, ever felt good enough. You know, I had an eating disorder for like t for 20 years and my life was completely controlled by food because I felt like that was the one thing that can, I could almost control what was going in and out of my body. But, um, you know, kind of, and then obviously ha having four babies um, and stuff going on in my life that I hadn't addressed 
because I hadn't addressed that, I would soothe myself. I kind of, I'd like kind of buried it. So I, on the surface, yeah, do you know, I feel great and all of that. Um, but it was the deep rooted stuff, which was why I've been in this cycle for so, so long because I've actually not wanted to face the scary stuff. So I would kind of just, you know, be uh, uh, on the surface. So then I would just go to those foods, the chocolate, Chinese or whatever, because um, they gave me comfort. And ultimately that was, uh, you know, bad for my health because I just kept putting on weight and putting on weight and putting on weight. Um, so, um, yeah, so much has changed, obviously working alongside you in such a short space of time that it's like that light bulb has gone on and gone. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. <laughs> also <Yeah>. emotional. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I know. Uh, what would you say is some of your biggest, either some of, or one of your biggest, uh, challenges maybe you've overcome over the last few years in either life or even business trying to juggle it all? So, uh, oh God, <laughs> shall I list them <laughs> off? <laughs> Have a list of all the things. There's been there's been so much that's that's going on. Like in my previous business, you know, I built a really successful business with them. You know, my business was turning over about four million a year. You know, I was at the top of the company, and that was really really amazing. You know, I was earning a multiple six figure income, and then um, I was the only income provider at home. And then they made a policy change, which um, almost overnight halved. Um, my business so I ended up getting into debts of around 250,000 mm -hmm. pounds um, so huge um, and having to go bankrupt which was really really hard because at that point I didn't know if I was going to lose everything you know I, I was a mum with kids I didn't even know if I was going to be able to live in my home because I didn't you know I didn't have that money so um, I, in fact this this year although there is big challenges this year, happy to share those. It's also been the best year because I made the decision to obviously move to another company. And, you know, my income is, well, my life is amazing in terms of my business and, you know, how the team is growing. And, um, yeah, we're smashing it here over in the UK. But I overcome that challenge. But the thing that I've never been able to nail or overcome, and I'm sure there'll be loads of women that will be able to relate to this, you know, we go on a health and fitness journey and we're really good and we're eating really well and then something crops up and the first thing that goes is us we go do you know what bottom of the pile I've got too much to deal with right now I'm going to reach for the chocolate or whatever it is because I don't actually want to face that stuff that's going on um and then it's us that goes to the bottom of the pile and that is something that I've done for the last my goodness 20 years until I made some changes. <laughs> yeah. What would you say, did you have, uh, some of us have like that turning moment or something that happens and you're like, a light bulb goes off and realizes, okay, I need to put myself back. I need to come first now. Did you have anything that just totally triggered, like it's time for you? Yeah, I think um, there's issues going on in my marriage currently, um, which are, are not great. Um, and what I realised, this was the, like the turning point, alongside David Goggins, of course, which has been, I'll talk about him in a minute, because like, oh, yeah. I have like meg, mega, mega crush on him, but not in that way, but he's just awesome. <laughs> um, I've realised that um, my marriage has not been right for a really, really long time. And what I have been doing is, I to cover that up, I've just been almost living at that the the layer the top layer and not delving deep into what the issues are. So how I've been coping with that is been coping with food, a bit like when we say, oh, you can have a treat meal at weekend, a treat meal, but that would be, oh, it's Friday, I'll have a, a treat meal Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the whole three days because that's what was soothing me at the time. Um, and obviously we've kind of hit a crisis point in, in, uh, in my marriage and it's been, wow, although it's, it's tough, it's made me realise it's been a massive, massive eye opener that actually I really need to face these issues because I cannot continue like this. 
if I'm not looking after myself, like if my marriage breaks down or, um, and I have to be mentally strong, fit, and to be putting good nutrition in, otherwise I'm going to be broken. Mm-hmm. That's how I see it. I know I, I'm going to get emotional now. <laughs> So if I can't do, I cannot do that to my kids, but I can't do that to myself anymore. Right. So it's been, I'm emotional because it's in, it's a happy emotion. Obviously sadness tinged in there, but um, it feels so good for it to kind of, you know, finally click and for me to go, for you to become the best version of yourself rather than you kind of burying your head you've got to face it head on because you're going to become a much stronger person for it you're showing your children the way by looking after yourself keeping yourself fit and um yeah i just think it's it's the way that i i have to do this for me and my children because if i don't I would I'd be broken yeah. and in my head some of the things that I've been doing is um I got this from you I've known about pers- I know about personal development I've, I've read stuff and you know I've done loads over the years but what I have found is I've really really got my head stuck into listening to material which is um where Untamed come from amazing book but then listening to a video of David Goggins and then um, getting his book on Audible and reading that. And I'm like, if that man can run on two broken legs, I can stop putting chocolate in my mouth. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, he, he, along obviously with you, because you've been amazing, you know, always, you know, touching base and making sure that I'm all right. And you just know when things aren't, aren't right alongside having you and listening to him and um it just it kind of has all kind of fit to fitted together so although my my marriage you know is breaking down it's been I think the making of me because um I'm facing stuff that I've never faced before yeah it's powerful so yes fighting back the tears I've got control now I've got control now (laughs) Okay. No, I love that because I feel like there's going to be so many women that can totally relate to everything you just said, because whether it be their marriage or their, you know, you name it. I mean, I, I, I feel like I talk to more women when they get to that point versus before. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's a big part of why I you know want to get this message out. And I feel like you're doing that right now because don't wait till you get to that point, but it's not easy. It's so hard. Um, but it's also good to, for other people that do listen to this to know that they're not alone. They're not alone in putting themselves in the back burner. Cause I feel like I swear it's in our DNA as women. If I could prove it, I would totally do it as women. And especially, yeah as soon as you become a mom and then you throw entrepreneurship on top of that and being a leader of a team, like the size of your, your teams that you have now and what you've had in the past, it's like you have all this pressure that you put that I, I feel like we have all this pressure over the, of the world to do all the things. But the thing that I feel like, would you say you are the one that maybe puts the most pressure on yourself? Cause I feel like a lot of us do that. Most of it is coming from ourselves because we don't want to ask okay. for help or we think we're super okay. we have to do it all. And we really don't. Absolutely. Um, and we, we can't do it very well if we're not doing what you just said. You're putting yourself first and your health because your babies deserve it, you know, and you deserve yeah. it number one um you know echo on last week's episode she was talking about this very thing and she's like you know i'm selfish in a sense like we have to be selfish in a sense and it's not a bad thing um and and it's being selfish and and so that we can be better for them for our babies because they deserve all of us and that's what makes me melts my heart even more so watching you do all that you're doing and so david goggins i love him if anybody doesn't if you if you've ever listened to david put david in the comments if you've not you should definitely check him out Mm. uh one of the uh, strongest hardest toughest men ever but his book was can't hurt me um 
check it out. But um, so how would you say, okay, so you mentioned you, you've done personal development because in the online businesses that we're in and network marketing, like this is something that we are trained to do all the time. Absolutely, but, yeah. Personal entrainment, personal entrainment, personal development, if I could say that right. Um, then compared to what you're doing now, what is, what is different? I know you meant besides listening to David. Yeah. I think I've really, I have really, really connected with him because he doesn't fluff anything. Mm -hmm. um, and the way I think lots of people need fluff sometimes, whereas I don't, I need, right, this is what you've got to do and get on and get on with it. I can really, really connect with his story. But at the same time, he is, um, what he's been through is insane. You know, we all have stuff go on in our lives. You know, I've had a pretty, tough upbringing so I could kind of you know relate to some of that but I I don't I, can't, I don't even know if I can put it into words but I understand now how important it is so when I am listening to that material I am listening to every word and I am taking it on board whether I want to do it or not or whether I want to exercise or not you know this is there is no, you can have a day off today because I'd end up feeling guilty. Do you know what I mean? It is, I, I have to do it. This is something that I'm going to be doing every day. It is my priority because I have always been, oh, it's all right, you can do it tomorrow. It's mm. all right, you can do it, put it off. And then tomorrow never comes. And that again is, is a cycle of mine. So I'm trying to break that habit. Um, and in uh, David's book, it's like do things that you don't want to do. So like in the morning, if I wake up and I, I don't want to exercise, I do it anyway because I feel, you know, amazing afterwards. So, yeah, I think it is so, so important. I cannot stress this enough that when you are having a really hard time, because we have stuff going on with my four year old at the moment. She's struggling with anxiety. She's. Um, she's going to have to get some support for that. I think it might be to do with the, the COVID and being, you know, locked in the house for so long. So she's really, really struggling too, alongside obviously what's going on in my marriage. Um, so I could quite easily, do you know what, say I'm going to, I'm going to stay in bed. I'm going to eat crap. Um, and I'm just going to shut myself off from the world. And that's what I've done. That has been my pattern for the last 25 years. Um, so it's breaking that habit because I know that that's not healthy. And if, you know, I am going to gonna become a single mum, I need to be mentally right for them and me. So if I don't feel like doing it, I'm doing it anyway. And my, my best piece of advice is if you don't want to do it, just do it because and it sounds like it's easy. It isn't. You need to kind of just say to that person on your shoulder that you're hearing, it's all right, take a day off, take a day off. Um, you've got to listen to that voice and say, you know, is this voice serving me? It probably isn't. And you've got to think about how you'll feel afterwards doing your training or whatever. Cause on Monday, was it Monday? I went out and I drove for five hours. hours yeah. Absolutely knackered. I came home and it was like, there's no excuses here. I've just been listening to David Doggins for five hours. I'm not going to come home and then not exercise. <laughs> right oh my gosh yeah so you're finding yourself you're listening to it while you're working out now too right uh, yeah oh, powerful. yeah and that you, really really gets me really really focused yeah yeah I find myself even lately like I you know when you're tired and you don't want to get up it's to me it's more I'm more craving the mental, the because I love to listen to the videos when I'm working out. That's what I do when I get yeah. the best workouts ever. But mentally, yeah. after your workout, you're even so much more ready to tackle the day yeah. mentally. No matter what throws at you, I, I got this. It's like you put on your iron suit. Like nothing is going to get me down, especially if you're listening to David Cockett. You know, when I came home from that five-hour drive, I had him in my head, and when I was exercising, I think I had the best workout that I've ever had because I could hear him. You know, like he does that hundred mile run. Yes. He didn't try, which he didn't train for. Um, okay. And I could just, I could just hear him in the back of my voice. I'm like, I can push myself harder. So after I'd finished my workout, I was on the floor like sweating for like an hour because it was like, it was like so hardcore. But I'm sort, he mentally, he's got so got into my head because he's just shown you the power of the mind, which is like. Yeah. it's just blow we, you know we're only using a small capacity and I think that book, that book in particular has really opened up to my mind to, you know what is possible 
Yeah. And absolutely. I can't keep, I can't, I can't stop saying Mother F because <laughs> of hearing him all the time, but I keep hearing him in my voice. You got this, you got this, you can do it. Yes, yes, yes. Can't hurt me is the book. You guys go oh, yeah, yeah. prepared. There are some some f bombs and quite you know not that it's some bad language, but it's so worth it. I mean, I actually yeah, so powerful. Yeah, it's so powerful. And I think what you you know really highlighted. If you're listening now and you're and you're listening, that the thing that I totally got from what you just said, and I and just from experience too, is like we have to feed our minds just as much as we feed our bodies with nutrition and mm. fitness. And I feel like that's the piece of the puzzle. Of so many myths. They work out, they might even eat clean, but it's the mind that they, it's the mindset part of it that they fail to even bother to try to work on. And so whether it's listening to the videos, you know, I'm not a reader. Some people love to read and that's great. I, I do not like to read. I just, I try. I have some amazing books, but it's audible for me or videos. Yeah, but, yeah, me too. Yeah, and, and some of you guys listening now may not, you know, relate to David Goggins. You got to figure out what works best for you. I know he's crazy powerful, um, but the key is finding what works for you. And you, if you listen to it while you work out, not only will you feel better mentally, you're going to even get a better workout. <laughs> yeah, you will, without a doubt. Yeah. And the yeah. other the one thing I did want to mention is um, I think the reason that um, I've struggled so much in my life is that there is. And I, I, I'm sure mums will be able to re relate to this. That there, for me, there's stuff that happened in my in my childhood that uh, became beliefs. For example, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. I'm stupid. I'm disgusting. You know, all these beliefs have come from not everyone being all coming. Some coming from a place of love, but other you know things they they become beliefs. And I didn't realize that even though I built a multi-million pound business, there were still some beliefs in there that were ingrained that I had not faced. So perhaps when, you know, something was coming up where I was feeling challenged and perhaps I felt stupid or whatever, I would then go to food. And what I've done, the, the flip, how, what has changed for me is that, okay, I still have this belief. I need to understand where that comes from. And I need to do the work on breaking that down and getting rid of that belief. Because it's those things that we hold on to that perhaps sometimes we don't share that's held me back. Um, so, yeah, that's, I just wanted to share that. Yeah, no, I like that because one of my next questions is, well, what, were, what are some of the biggest changes that you've made over the last three, three going on four months now? And and that could be t definitely one of them. Instead of turning to food, you're turning to your workout. So besides besides working out, now what is your uh, like? What, what are some of your biggest changes that you would say, even on the nutrition side, that you've made? Yeah, the nutrition side has changed dramatically, particularly over um, what we've. I've had some really challenging stuff go on in the last four weeks, um, and what I've understand understood from working with you. Um, and, you know, listening to David Goggins and, you know, all of that stuff. I think working with you has been the catalyst for, you know, everything kind of being out in the open, me having to share my food, my food and my workouts and it being out, almost out there has been, uh, been really, really good for me. So, um, oh God, I've lost my train of thought now. Yeah. Um, it's been, um, yeah, it's been, yeah. Yeah, it's been so much change. Nutrition massively because I would eat crap all the time. Um, I wouldn't think about what was going in my body um, and obviously not sleeping. So I, I used to sleep all the time. You know, that that's changed. But mentally in the last four weeks, there's been a massive, massive shift. And that's because I'm more challenged now than I have ever been. Um, and I can't be that broken mum anymore because if I'm that broken mum I can't love and look after my children to my best ability so although times are hard it's probably the best time of my life because I'm evolving and I'm going to become even stronger than ever before and I know that with me sharing this stuff and me being accountable on my Facebook I also know that I'm helping other women so that empowers me because you know if I can help any woman that perhaps has, is, has been and felt the way that I have, then um, that would be, yeah, a, a wonderful thing for me. 
Yeah, I remember having that talk with you, you um, sharing your journey. And so, and you, and you're, you're inspiring so many women by doing it and keeping yourself accountable. And that's definitely a method to the madness behind a lot of the things I'll say, have you do start posting, do this, do that. It's, it's, it's amazing to watch. Um, and how would you say, do you feel like it's helped you men be mentally a stronger, say a leader, for example, in your business? Cause your business is constantly growing and your people are ranking up. I'm blessed to be in the same business with Louise here so we can follow it. I can see her and it's like, bam, 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 bam. It's awesome to watch. But do you feel like you're better uh, as a present leader in that space as well? Yeah, absolutely. Because my headspace is right. Whereas yeah. before it's almost been, I've been in a bit of a fog really because Although on the surface it all looked good, but you know, behind, you know, when I would switch off and I'm at home, I was un unhappy and I would find excuses not to do things. Um, so yeah, it's, it's helped me all round, really. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, how would you, if you had anything to say to anybody out there, what would be your biggest piece of advice for someone that maybe is in a similar situation to you or just? A mom that is putting herself on the back burner over and over and over and over and, and like like you were and like many of us have and still do, regardless. But piece of advice to anybody out there listening, um, what would you say to any woman? I think when you, if you look at the whole picture, it can be really overwhelming. So if perhaps they are challenged um, and they want to exercise and they want to eat well and they need to drink more water and they need to be looking after, I'll call it mental wealth, fill your head, mental wealth, making, um, um, filling your head with the good stuff is one step at a time because otherwise what I know what I, it would get overwhelming. And that's what I loved about working with you, which is, which is why I think everyone should work with you. Like everyone in the world <laughs> should work with you. Um, is what I found, found so easy was one step at a time so we started with water didn't we and it's like, oh yeah that you know what that's really really easy um and that massively massively helped so rather than thinking oh my this is my end goal start with with one thing and master that you know manage that and then move on to the next thing because otherwise it can be overwhelming but the other thing i would definitely say even if you don't feel like doing it fill your head with the good stuff go and find something that's going to motivate you get on youtube there is tons of stuff you might not like that david goggins you know i i love him i think he's amazing um but find what you connect with um and fill you know fill your head with the good stuff it's not going to be you know you're going to be not say fixed but healed but it's going to help because we are, you know, we're surrounded by negativity news, what's going on in the world right now, even adverts that are on the TV. We are surrounded by, you know, as a race, we can be quite negative unless you're in, you know, the self-development journey. So we don't have the news at home. We don't listen to the radio because, you know, I don't want my kids to expose that. I just want to fill their heads with the good stuff. So expose yourself to more good things. And also think about the people that you're surrounding yourself with. I have this message with my team that if you have negative people in your life, if it's family, you can, there's nothing you can do about that. But almost put yourself in a protective, I, I like visualize a protective bubble, protect yourself from that energy and go in. Um, yeah, and just, yeah, protect yourself and know that that person is perhaps coming from a place of love, whatever that may be. But yeah, fill your head with the good stuff. I could be talking for hours. What you'll see is I'll be like rambling about this, 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 and this. That's okay. But that's me. There's, but yeah, yeah, there's so much value there, though. And I'm glad that you said that because the two biggest things that I love and I really strongly believe in are what you just said baby steps. Too many people dive in, they go from, I want to get healthy. So they do everything all at one time. And that's definitely in my program that I love to take women through. It's, I, a lot of times it's like, stop, slow down one thing. Yeah. All one thing. Cause it's good. You master that consistently. Like you said, cause yeah. consistent is everything. You don't have to do everything all at once. You don't yeah. have to try to find the quick results. But the biggest thing that you said is this, I'm a big believer, whether you're on a weight loss journey, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you a stay at home mom, whether you work a job, it does not matter. If you are breathing and living on today's world, you need some positivity in your mind. Mm -hmm. And like you said, YouTube is one of my favorite places to go to. I'm subscribed to, I don't even know how many that now they just <laughs> 
on my phone daily, like, oh, that's a good one. You know, I've got some amazing people. You got to figure out what works for you, though. You know, yeah. and there's a lot, and uh, we've got some that we can definitely recommend, um, like David Goggins. But like Louis said, she, they, he may not be somebody that you relate to. So find who you relate to. But that's something that we have to do on a daily basis, a daily habit. If you're yeah. in the phone, or you spend your time even on social media, like we run our businesses on social media, but if you live on it and you don't know the unfollow button or the delete button, or like you've got to get that crap out of your site daily, or you're going to take that energy, that negative energy, like you said, and you're, that's what you're going to give to your family. And that is, that to me is, is it's, it's, it's bad. It's definitely not what we want to do. And I know no mom wants to do that, but that's kind of okay. what happens when you feed yourself or let the negativity soak in. Um, so I mean, what's, what's the first thing that most people do is when they wake up in the morning, uh, pick oh. up the phone, start scrolling. And that's the worst thing you can do. You've got to make your first 10 minutes the best 10 minutes. So whether that is getting up, you know, 10 minutes before journaling or getting up half an hour early and exercising without going onto Facebook, onto social media, because you're basically then controlled by what other people are posting and it can affect you. So you've got to start your day absolutely the right way. And yeah, don't scroll. Go find yeah. some fun stuff to, to look bet. at. That used to be a bad habit. I would go right to my phone and start scrolling. Last thing you, last thing you want to do, pick up or don't pick up your phone. Focus on you. And I hear a lot of moms like, I don't have time. I don't have, there's no time for me. Well, I, my big belief, even if it's only 10 minutes, like you said, wake up 10 minutes for anybody else does. Sit in a quiet room if you have to lock yourself in the bathroom, like in quietness, and just spend some quiet time with yourself. Um, it, it's so, 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 so important for yourself, for your family, and all the above. So, um, oh my gosh, you brought so much. I'm so thankful that Thank you- Thank you so much for having me. Yes, you guys, if you're listening again, if you're watching this live, you're in our group already. If you're not in our group and you're listening to this in the podcast later, um, then join our group. Just go to acfitmama.com. There's a big page, there's a big button on the main page that you can join our community. It's for all women. Uh, follow Louise. If you're watching this right now, follow her because you are, you can see her journey, see what she does and you'll be inspired by watching her. And if you are watching this and you're like, I'm lost, I need help. Uh, I, I, you can set up a free time for me, us to just chat. We'll hop on a call together. There's a link above if you're watching it or uh, my website, acfitmama.com slash chat. And then it doesn't hurt to set up some time to just chat, right? So yeah, um, Angela is fire. Everyone has to work with Angela. She's awesome. Oh my gosh, I love you. <laughs> I'll pay for that one later. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love working with you and I, I can't wait to keep, you know, keep going and keep supporting you and keep loving on you and keep watching you succeed. 11 pounds down in the last few weeks, girl. You're amazing keep going you deserve every bit of it and keep david in your ears so thank you so much for oh uh, you're so welcome lovely to, to be on with you my yes. favorite human you are ah uh, thank you so much <laughs> all right you guys if you are listening drop her some love in the comments and we'll see you next thursday 11 a.m central